Hey there, my name is Meg. Um, I run Pesky Cat Papercraft, and I will be showing you how to do a double fan bind today. This very low production video is brought to you by the number four, and I'm gonna try and work um, kind of sideways so you can see everything and I'm out of the way. Okay, so what we have here is a paperback book that has been turned into just loose leaf pages. They're completely loose, there's no spine. I did this with my paper cutter. Um, you will probably be rebinding A4 sheets, um, but any loose leaf paper can be bound in this method. The only thing you need is your loose leaf, um, a piece of cloth. Typically you use muslin. Um, you can use linen, you can use mull. Um, I don't really like using mull for double fan binds because it's not, it's not flexible enough and you want it to have that, that really nice drape. Um, normally you would use unbleached or white cloth. I'm using blue so it shows up well in this video. Um, a note about glue. You never want to use Elmer's or any cheap quality glue for stuff like this. You want actual glue made for bookbinding. And that's because, for number one, it's pH neutral. So the acid isn't going to eat away at the pages or cause any problems with the binding. The other thing is that this type of glue stays flexible when dry. And this is going to do some, some pretty crazy gymnast stuff. So what we're going to do next is uh, get to work. This is a lying press. It's made for finishing books, working on the spines and whatnot. Um, you can also use it to fan glue. I know you probably shouldn't have one of these because no one that's sane should. Uh, instead, you've probably seen these. These are regular large uh, binders clips. And if you don't have a lying press, which again, you shouldn't, um, we're gonna use these instead. Please pardon my parrot in the background. Let me grab a cup. Okay. Little Dixie cup for that. Normally you would use a paste brush. I don't have any paste brushes. I sent them uh, with my other binder to work on some stuff. So instead we're gonna use these little sponge brushes because it's what I have on hand. All right, so let's get to work. The concept of a double fan bind is very simple. On a perfect bind, you've got your book and you flip it like this. And the way it's bound is the pages are jogged they're clamped as close to the spine as you can get it, and a lot of layers of either cold or hot glue are added, and the pages are laminated together. That's fine, but it's like every other paperback you've ever held. The pages aren't flexible up till about here because they're so tightly bound. Because this is a double fan bind and the background is gonna be cloth, you get a lot more flexibility with it. So what you're gonna do is jog the front of your pages. This would be the part you're actually opening. So we're going to jog this up, make sure it's straight. I will say that if you plan on printing your own book or binding your own pages, you need to leave a pretty decent margin around it. The only way you're going to get a square book when you're binding loose leaf pages is if you actually trim them after they're done being bound. Otherwise, you're always going to have some that just kind of stick up. You might get close, but it'll never be perfect. All right, so binder clip, one goes here. Second binder clip. One goes here. And here's the really genius part about using binder clips. Ta-da! <laughs> so instead of having a lying press and a stand, you've essentially made your own. What you will need is something to bend it over, however, and you're probably gonna need something to brace the back of it, otherwise it's just gonna fall. So what we're gonna do is use our Lying press in a different way today. I'm sure it's quite offended. We're going to take a little bit of our glue. Pop it in a cup. This is by Lineco, by the way. The brand name is Books by Hand. You can get it on Amazon. It's not expensive. I think it's maybe eight bucks. So it's really not that much more expensive than Elmer's, but the kind of quality you get out of it as opposed to a cheap PVA is, is really worth it. There are glues that are higher quality. You can use Jade 403. Um, that's kind of the gold standard for book binding, but um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, this stuff is plenty fine. I've used it a bunch of times. So a double fan bind. We're going to bend it one way and glue it. We're going to bend it the other way and glue it. And then we're going to stand it up and apply a little bit of cloth. Actually, I don't like it. That's better. All right, so uh, easy as it sounds. Bend it this way. You want to fan these pages out really as far as you can get them. Um, yeah, there we go. That's better. 
any gaps like this, I don't even know if you can see it, but you want it to be an even fan. You don't want some pages to get more glue than others because then those will adhere um, differently than most of the other pages. So, give it a glue, brush it on. Bookbinding glue will feel like plastic if you get it on your hands. Um, just kind of rub your hands together and it'll come right off. Another thing about glue is that it will cause your pages to warp. Um, we're going to have to press this thing afterwards just to be on the safe side and ensure that all our pages are fine. If you ever get pages that do warp, um, basically the concept is just put a bunch of heavy stuff on top of it. Um, I have an antique iron book press over here, I don't know if you can see it, but that's how I press my books. But you, don't, you don't have to press it that way. Anything heavy will work. You can use regular arm weights. Um, you can use an antique actual iron. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what you use. You can use just about anything. Okay, so that's fan number one. Now what we're going to do is stand it up. Flip it around. Okay, now we're going to fan it the other direction. Ugh, I've got glue all over this thing. Alright, so bend it over. Really, this is not deep enough of a fan, um, but I'm having a hard time getting a deep fan using this box. Generally, you want something a little smaller. Please ignore my cats running like crazy in the background. We're not called pesky cat papercraft for no reason. Okay. That's good enough for me. Stand it back up. Yeah, this is another reason you don't want to use this. Kind of squeeze them. Now that you've got it like this, we're going to apply another strip of glue right here. Being kind of liberal with the glue too. Should probably use a little bit less to be honest with you. I will say another tip um, from binder to binder is that you always want to have a towel on your shoulder so that when this happens and you get glue all over your hands, you don't have to stop. You can just reach up and pull it off. I'm going to use a paper towel right here instead. Alright, so that's that. Now you'll notice that if you squeeze this, some glue will come out. That's fine too. We're going to take our cloth. Again, don't use blue, but it shows up really well. We're going to lay it over the spine. Stretch it. Lay it down. And squeeze the excess glue out. Hold the back and pull one side. Okay, that turned out pretty good. Run your hand along it. Some binders will actually put another strip of glue over here and then another piece of cloth. Um, I don't really think you need to. I think this is plenty of glue and it'll adhere just fine. And we're going to let that dry and we'll be back in a bit.